This video explains how to use Excel and Macintosh to extract data tables from websites. The first thing to do is go to the website which contains the table. That's what you see over here. Copy the URL. Once you copy the URL, you would have to then go to Finder. Finder's little bar down here. And you want to look for something called Text Edit File. We want to open a new document. Paste the URL. And now up to the left, you save this. I'm saving this on my desktop, so I would like to save this as the video on S&P 500 using a Mac. Now, what I really want to do is have the extension IQY, which is Internet Curing. But you'll notice that Apple won't let me do this. When I, what I mean by this is, the second I say save, you'll notice it attaches the extension .txt. To fix this, close this file, go back to Finder, go to Desktop, and now let's look for that file. That file was right here, video, sp500 mac iqy.txt now you rename this and i get rid of .txt i hit enter it's asking me whether i want to keep text or use iqy i use iqy i now close this the next step now is to open excel and what you want to do is, remember that in Macintosh, you actually have two ribbons, one in Excel and one to the top left. You'll see a data tab in Excel's top bar, but also on the screen's top bar. You want to go to the one on the screen, data right there. Go to get data. Go to rub, run, sorry, web query. And now you want to simply click on that file that we created, which was Mac SP500 IQY. It's going to ask you, it's a table, where do you want this? Let's actually not put it in B53, but rather in A1. Say import. Mac is pretty fast at getting this. Uh, now we need to do a little bit of housekeeping. So first of all, let's center this. Put some borders. And I'm going to put this as a label. Um, you will also notice that if I uncheck this, wrap text, it looks a bit cleaner now. Now, Apple has a flaw. When it says values, these are not really values. This often happens in data science we download data but the what you see is not formatted as a number but as text so there's two ways to find out so for example one way you can notice that right away this is not as in stored as a number is if you try to add one to it you get an error and that's because that particular s p 500 here if i ask if it's a number the answer is going to be false similarly if i ask if it's a text it's going to be true. So somehow you have to convert these values, which are texts, into numbers. The easiest way to do this is highlight these numbers, go to data in the Excel menu, and you click on text to columns. Choose fixed width. Do not 
check next instead click on finish right away so you see it now does it so for example I can confirm this is a number because if I add one I get something so this is now SNP real S&P 500. I would like to create a chart of year versus S&P 500. So let's do it this way. All right. So for year, notice that you have data going all the way to 1871. As soon as this looks at years 1899 and prior, it doesn't follow the date format. Excel can't handle dates in the regular date format for any year prior to 1900. So the way you get, first of all, let's see how you get year normally, and let's see if that works for any year before 1900. You simply use the command year, click on this cell, and you get the year. And now I'm going to fill this formula down. And you will notice that it gives you an error message for any year, 1899 and earlier. One simple trick to get around this is to realize that 1899 is 1909 minus 10. And now if I copy this formula down, we now have all the years from 2024 back down to 1871. One thing I also forgot to mention was, if you look carefully, when you download data from this particular website, even though you're asking for annual data, it always throws in the S&P 500 on the last trading day. So I'm going to remove that row. Let's just check nothing went wrong down there. Everything's OK. To make the chart, you now want to copy and hard paste real S&P 500 someplace else. I'm going to put this over here. Again, let's make it look pretty. Put borders. And now, this is our. Since we want to plot a chart from 1871 to 2024, we have to sort this data and make it go upside down. So we go data, sort. It says sort by what? We sort by year, smallest to largest. And now it's done it. Everything looks OK. To make a chart, I suggest we start at the bottom and go to the top. And now we say insert chart. You go to insert, choose chart. Don't worry about this so much right now. Let's move this chart to a new worksheet. So this will be chart, real, SP500. Let's make this a bit smaller. And now we'll play some tricks. Remove year, click on this, simply delete. Let's try to make it look more pretty. So you'll notice that these are not years. So we choose select data. It's asking you where are the horizontal x-axis labels located. Go right there. And you start from 1871 all the way to 2024. So now all the years are here. You may want to make this look a little bit more nicer. So we go to format data series, choose color. Sometimes it's a good idea to make these lines a little thinner. Let's say one point, make it smooth, looks much better. All right, um, there's no need to actually have this legend over here. We know what it is. Now we have to put 
access labels. So what you do is you click on the chart, you go to chart design, say add chart element. So we'll say primary horizontal. We'll say here. And then we'll say chart design, add chart element, axis title vertical. We'll say annual real S&P 500. We don't need to format the number format here because it's already, there's no 4000.00. One small tweak that some people like is to make sure that the tick marks are on, let's see, they are on the tick marks right there. Nothing big. All right. So now we have the S&P 500 chart and we're done. And just to show you the summary, This is the summary of the steps that we followed. And these are the commands, some of them that we used. Thank you very much.